Hey there class, hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're gonna focus on reviewing what the method of doubt is. And then I'm gonna tease out two assumptions that seem to be guiding the way that Descartes is using this method. And then we're gonna look at a worry for one of those assumptions, what we're gonna call the infallibleist assumption that Descartes seems to be making. So remember the method of doubt is this policy of withholding beliefs from any claim we can find any reason to doubt, no matter how small that reason is. Now, remember, Descartes is using this as a method to help him determine what he does and does not know so that he can rebuild his knowledge in a stronger way. That's his goal. Now, remember, he's not just going to doubt things. He's not just going to throw out his beliefs for no reason whatsoever. He's only going to withhold belief if he can find a reason to doubt them. And these skeptical hypotheses are possibilities he raises that are meant to provide some reason to doubt what his senses tell him about the external world around him. So some of these skeptical hypotheses include, as we saw, that, well, we could be dreaming, or these senses could be coming to us from an evil genius. Now, today, some people bring more high-tech skeptical hypotheses up, like this idea that, well, we could just be a brain sitting in a vat with wires hooked up to a computer that's stimulating our brain to make it feel like we're interacting with the world. So this was originally introduced by someone named Hilary Putnam, but it turns out to be the plot of a popular movie from late 1990s, um, The Matrix. So our focus in this video is not to evaluate Descartes' use of these particular skeptical hypotheses. Our focus is on the method overall. Our next video will focus on some of these skeptical hypotheses themselves. But now, in our reading, Descartes does attempt to reply to, to potential worries you might have with adopting this method for determining what we do and don't know. So one worry is just, hey, look, we have too many beliefs. We just aren't going to be able to go through each of them one by one looking for reasons to doubt them. Now, Descartes replies that, well, look, this isn't really a problem because you don't need to go through your beliefs one by one. You can apply this method by looking for reasons to doubt the foundations of your beliefs. And if there is a reason to doubt the foundations, that'll give you a reason to doubt a whole bunch of beliefs all at once. Now, another worry you might raise is that, well, maybe this method is just impractical because look, we need to live our lives. When a car is about to hit me, I need to get out of the way. It isn't helpful for me to sit there and consider all the potential doubts about my belief that there's a car headed towards my way and that it might hurt me. Now, Descartes replies here, well, look, I cannot at present yield too much to distrust or to doubt. So he says, look, doubting these beliefs is a good method. He says, because I'm not considering the question of action. He says, I'm not trying to figure out how to live my life or what actions I should perform. He says, instead, he's using the method to consider his knowledge, to figure out what he does and does not know. So yes, maybe in ordinary life, when we're just trying to figure out what to do, we might have to act on uncertain information, uh, on information that is doubtful. But if we're trying to figure out what we do and do not know, he thinks then it's helpful to withhold belief from those things that you could potentially doubt. Nonetheless, the way Descartes uses this method to try to determine what he does and does not know seems to be guided by certain assumptions he has about knowledge, and some of those assumptions might be called into question. So one of those assumptions is what we might call infallibilism. This is the view that knowledge requires certainty. And so a belief will only count as knowledge if it's impossible for the belief to be mistaken. Now, if you have this view about knowledge, the method of doubt makes sense because he's looking for a reason to doubt, a way that his belief might be mistaken. If you can find a way that your belief might be mistaken, well, that means the belief is not infallible. And so if knowledge requires certainty, that would be a good reason to withhold belief and say you don't actually know it. All right, so one worry for that guiding assumption is just maybe requiring certainty is going to lead us to so little knowledge that we're not going to be able to build anything interesting on it because barely anything is going to meet this super high bar of certainty. Now, maybe Descartes' right. 
Maybe the cogito counts. Maybe I can know with certainty that I exist. So I, I do have some knowledge, but that just seems so small that it's not clear how I could start from a belief that's 100% certain that I exist and get to anything interesting about science or medicine or history, etc. It looks like all that's just going to go by the wayside. A related worry is that maybe this appeal to looking for any reason to doubt our belief is just excessive. Requiring 100% certainty just seems to set the bar too high. Maybe we should take some doubts seriously, but not others. So for instance, maybe when I believe that there's a yellow bird outside my window and I think it's a goldfinch, yeah, maybe the doubt that it could be a yellow warbler instead, that seems like a relevant doubt that I ought to take seriously. But now you say, Sam, how do you know you're not just dreaming the bird? How do you know you're not just in the matrix? How do you know that this isn't all just a computer simulation? Well, now some people think, like, oh, that doubt, it's just too extreme. It, it's not helpful for figuring out what you do and do not know. Now, here's a question for you to consider, though. Maybe this just shows we need to modify Descartes' method of doubt. Maybe we could still use doubt to figure out what we do and do not know. We just need to be careful about which kinds of doubt we consider and we use to decide what we should withhold belief about. But now a question becomes, how do we determine which doubts are relevant or we should take seriously and which doubts we shouldn't? That's a tricky question that you should try to think through. Now, a last worry that's related to the other two is that a lot of people worry that this infallible assumption, this idea that you need to be able to rule out all possible doubts, is just inevitably going to imply that we know almost nothing. So many philosophers say they think infallibleism leads to skeptical ideas, that it leads to the idea that I don't know that I have hands, that I don't know that trees exist, that I don't know that I'm holding a coffee cup in my hand. So some philosophers think that the fact that it contradicts so much of what we ordinarily believe about knowledge is a reason to think that maybe knowledge doesn't require such a high bar to be met. Maybe we should lower the bar and think maybe we can know things without having 100% certainty. Descartes might not be impressed by this criticism because he wasn't a skeptic in the end. He thought his methods would eventually help us gain certainty about many of these things. So that's all for this video. The next video is going to consider some responses to skepticism. And some of these responses will be closely related to some of the worries I've mentioned here. All right, see you then.